So I guess the first thing to establish if you thought this might be needed in your transition group would be to find out really if there is a need, if people respond to some of your descriptions of what can happen or what maybe you see people stressed and irritable or telling people you know they should be working harder when they're trying to take some time out you know in various ways then you know maybe people can see that sometimes you know actually doing this work and the weight of responsibility people tend to feel they have on their shoulders is stressing them out and they could do with something like this. So the first thing is to see if there's a need. After that, um, it, you, you can try approaching local counselling organisations to see if anyone would volunteer. So rather like we did, we approached people that we knew. If you already have a counsellor in your local project, they are likely to know who's around and who might want to help. So if you didn't know any therapists who you knew were going to was share, shared transitions aims, um, then one way you could go about doing this would be to contact local counselling organisations with a description of what you were looking for and wondering whether anyone might be interested in working with you to set something up like this. The it, you can do it by Skype, you can do the mentoring by Skype, so it actually doesn't have to be local. It's another thing to remember, there may be people nationally who would be able to offer this. And there is also an organisation, uh, the Activist Trauma Support Network, which you can look, look at their website on the net. And it, they have counsellors nationally in the UK um, who are offering this um, to that network. It's set up by psychotherapists and counsellors for social responsibility. So that's a really useful website to look at and you could go to them for advice. And they probably have some international connections as well. A couple of people who were involved in inner transition, Sophie and Hilary, recognised that counselling supervision might provide the support to people who were at the, you know, at risk of burnout. The first thing uh, was that we uh, matched some people that we were new knew um, were saying, yeah, I could really do with something like that with the people who came forward who offered voluntarily um, their, their skills and they met up with them and decided how often they would meet, what, what their needs were and so on. Some people decided to meet you know, for like six sessions, some people decided to have a long term arrangement um, and some people decided it was great that they knew where the counsellor was and that they would come and use them whenever they needed to and there might be a few months or a year's gap between using them so it was individual arrangements that were set up. Another way of thinking about how can we provide emotional support to each other is to look at co-counselling um, this is a peer counselling arrangement where you meet up regularly as a group, often pair off and do listen to each other for a while, asking helpful questions, uh, using some, some counselling skills and then swap round and the other person reciprocates, does the same for you. Now it's important though that you um, think about confidentiality and so on and uh, there's a lot of help on the co-counselling website uh, telling you about how to set up something and also a training course which is essential to do, a short training course before you start something like this up.